Welcome to Amazing You, where we're going to reclaim your identity, step into your power, and activate your soul's purpose. I'm your host, Dr. Alicia Antica. You can find my programs, courses, books, and trainings at lishaantica.com. Let's get started. So on the live, I said I was going to talk about um, the narcissist and the empath. If this is something that interests you, that you think will support you, that um, you know will support some of your friends, then I'd love to talk about it because it is not spoken about enough. It's not spoken about consciously and honestly. Um, the toxic empath is looked at as like empathy. The empath is looked at as some like psychic guru, intuitive genius, can't be wrong bullshit, which, um, there's a big difference, or at least I've discovered in my own journey and my life that there is a big difference between all of my psychic, clairvoyant, clairsentient, and clairaudient skills, which are skills that I've developed over years that um, are gifts from God. All of us have them. You just discover how to use them. You start utilizing them, right? Like you guys have watched me grow in my mediumship this year, something that happened often, but you know, I'm getting more and more spirits coming, coming through. (laughs) Right. And so, um, so these are skills that you do. And then there's the empath. So the empath that attracts the narcissist. Okay. The toxic empath, um, that's different. So I want to talk about the toxic empath, not the clairvoyant, clairsentient, clairaudient, not the psychic, not the intuitively in touch. These are very, very different. There's intuitively in touch narcissist. There's intuitively in touch and um, psychically aware narcissist. They are master manipulators. Both parties are actually um, just in different ways. And, um, and in order for us to heal, we have to be able to look at ourselves. So I'm speaking more towards the um, toxic empath here because that's who I can relate to. It's where we're going. Like the goal, simply me, um, is to be in that balance, right? So one of the scariest things for me personally healing from toxic empathy, as I notice how I'm feeling, how I notice what my opinions are, as I discover like what I want, um, then separate from other people, then I feel selfish, then I feel, um, and I feel scared and then I feel shame. Right. And so then I look at like, but all the traits that I'm having is this really healthy narcissism. So I'm thinking about myself and I'm thinking about my emotions and I'm making myself matter. And I'm asking myself where my boundaries are and I'm setting those boundaries and I'm allowing myself to be right and not wrong all the fucking time. Right. And so so for the narcissist, it's just the opposite, right? Now there's different levels. There's, there's healthy empathy and there's healthy narcissism. Okay. It's very important. And then there's toxic. So toxic empathy, we call it hypervigilance and we call it codependence. Okay. That's the name of toxic empathy, hypervigilance and codependence. Okay. The name they have for toxic um, narcissism is a personality disorder that we call narcissistic personality disorder. Okay. Both of these are very different than sociopathical, soci- sociopath. Okay. Pathological liars and, um, and antisocial personalities and, and, um, other things like that, that, that deal with really, these are the abusers, Okay. These are the, these are the abusers and not that we all can't have abusive. The the toxic empath can be absolutely abusive. Okay. You guys absolutely abusive. And, um, then that would even turn into feeling other people's feelings so intensely, especially if you feel 
somebody not liking you and you know that it's true because enough people have felt that, right? You felt it before. So you get this like anxiety. It's like somebody doesn't like you. Somebody's not there with you. Um, and you don't know what to do with that. You can't change it, right? And you take it personally and then you internalize it. Um, that we call borderline personality disorder, okay? And then we have... Um, the toxic version of that, right? It gets more and more and more toxic from, from there with that. Um, your family is psychopath. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have to ignore the narcissist to leave you alone. You have to block them from your phone, block them, block them, block them to leave you alone. Or just set really, 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 um, really strong boundaries. Um, like say if it's your mom or your dad or somebody and you're choosing not to block them, it's like having those really, really powerful boundaries. Are you saying that you can develop borderline personal? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in my research, in my studies that borderline personality disorder can be called childhood sexual abuse disorder. I mean, I think, I think it's an identity crisis. I think it's, I call it object identity, object identity disorder. And I think half the people, if not more, I think 75% of the people now I'm just saying this. Okay. This is my opinion, but I've read many dissertations, many studies, many research on all of this. And I think 75% of diagnoses that are borderline personality disorder, if their childhood trauma, sexual trauma is treated, they no longer will have that disorder. It goes away. When I set boundaries, people think I'm rude. Who fucking gives a shit? People only think you're rude because they're used to you being able to be stepped on. And I'm saying this, I don't know you from, you know, from anybody, but I think that, um, most of the time when we're upon, when we're over empathetic, when we're, when we are a people pleaser, then we start setting boundaries. The people around us that have been able to step on us, hurt us, everything, they're going to not be happy about it because they no longer can use us and abuse us and hurt us and get their supply from us. Right. And we've been their feeding supply. So yeah, it feels like that. Then the empathy, right? That's toxic empathy. That's feeling what they feel and uncomfortable with their uncomfortableness and our own uncomfortableness. We can't go and do that, <clears throat> right? We can't, we can't go there anymore. So we, um, we block ourselves, we stop ourselves, and then we go back into people pleasing. We slide back in. So it takes a lot of courage for you to learn new habits and be okay with how they're feeling. Check in with your own feelings. This is why if you're a part of Amazing You, we go into like, what is your, where, what are you feeling physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually every morning when we do our SSS practice, which we'll do tomorrow morning, you guys, I will be up regular time. Um, we, we check in with each of these things. Where are you at today? Right. And so then when somebody else has a feeling they're pissed off because you're no longer allowing them to step all over you, walk all over you. And you've set a boundary and you're holding that boundary with a consequence that you manage, then they, um, they get pissed and you have to let them be pissed you get to learn how to let them be pissed. And it's super healthy for you not to be empathic that way. They're in charge of their own emotions. And yes, as you heal, you have to be okay losing every relationship in your life. And some will come back and some will be gone forever. And some will just shift, right? Like I have a close relationship with my mom, but I will never go to my mom for my emotional needs. Mm -mm. Like, you know, I did do my will and testament on um, Christmas Eve. I did do it to appease her and because I want my kids to have everything and I don't, they don't need to go to their dads and all of that stuff. Um, so if you've already lost them all, then it's just about being okay, pissing off the people that you barely even know. So practice, right? And, um, miracle welcome. Thanks for the follow. And so, um, you're just f finding this availability for you to, to learn a new way of being.
So you can be a little bit more narcissistic if you're overly empathic, right? We need to move towards that middle line. They're both on a spectrum. And the, and the narcissist, right, they can heal too. Now, psychopaths, schizophrenics, sociopaths, okay, pathologicals, um, they're different, right? They're different. There is a lot more healing that needs to go on in, in that realm. And if you're in relationship with one of those people, they have a lot of inner healing to do as well. I believe everybody can heal and miracles happen. If we can heal from cancer like that, we can heal from, from mental disorders like that. I really truly believe that, right? Um, most of the people that have serious, like crippling mental disorders are either trauma induced or they're biological in nature. And for me personally, the people that I know that actually have like mental um, slowness, mental retardation, mental, um, mental blocks in that way that aren't trauma induced, aren't learned behaviors, are sweet. They're sweet, they don't wanna hurt anybody. They don't wanna hurt anybody. They're kind, they're loving, they're compassionate. They just can't take care of themselves and they're all over the place, but they're kind. I mean, they're wonderful people, wonderful people. I mean, how about you guys, right? The people that have a lot of drama and a lot of trauma and all of this, they're the ones that are psychopaths or the ones that are, that are splitting. So, um, it takes a lot for, for them to heal and something went awry in their brains and they're, they're hurtful, whether it's to themselves or to other people or all of the above, right? So when somebody's stuck in that state, it takes so much self-responsibility and humility to admit that we've been shitheads, right? That it's almost impossible for many of them to heal. And that's why the narcissist doesn't want to come in and get help. That's why the pathological can't. The lying just continues and continues. One of the biggest issues for survivors to move from victimhood to survivor, okay, is stop lying. As a childhood abuse survivor, we're trained to lie, especially in-house abuse. Okay, it's a little bit different outside of the house, but if you have in-house abuse that's happening, um, you, we learn how to lie about it, right? We learn how to lie about it. We have to lie about it. We have to pretend like everything's okay. We have to go to church on Sundays. We have to act like everything's fine. I remember in my marriage, right? Which was just mental and emotional abuse. But in my marriage, I literally every Sunday would be wiping my tears off as I smiled and walked into church, just completely broken, just broken to fuck. He would break me every Sunday like fucking clockwork every Sunday I'd be broken right before I walked into the house of worship, which I felt that was where I was most powerful. Okay. With spirit and God is where I was most powerful. And I think, you know, I show you guys and share that those gifts with you each week, each day here. And so he would break me before I walked in there and I would literally be lying until I wasn't anymore. Okay. By the end of our marriage, I was like, <laughs> fuck that shit. Yeah. Um, did you ever start? Yeah. Numbness was a beautiful thing. Now I numbed myself out with, um, alcohol sometimes on Thursdays <laughs> when I was married, <laughs> I'd get drunk on Thursdays. <laughs> Uh, not give a shit for about 10 minutes and then go, you know, more into it. Um, I, I numb myself out when I would go into, um, fits of rage sometimes, um, fighting for my fighting to be heard, fighting to be listened to. Right. So sometimes we can numb ourselves out by going deeply into it. I numb myself, myself out by, um, diving into different things. Like I dived into therapy, like literally therapy, self-help, personal help, all of those things numbed me out for years, kept me stuck in that survival mode, making myself wrong for not being fixed already, not being listened to because people weren't, I would hire coaches that were business coaches or whatever, but had no clue how to handle emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, right? So it is okay to be numb. And in, in that place of numbness, it's just like, okay, this is a break, 
right? Now, if you're numbing yourself out with drugs, alcohol, substance, gambling, um, anything to cover up your emotions, that's, that's the sign. So then it's like, okay, how can I become okay with these emotions? And at the same time, like learn how to utilize the emotion of numbness. Does that make sense? Emotional detachment shows us where we need a break. Yes, Amy. Yes, I agree. So one thing that I do in therapy that therapists don't do is in therapy, we learn to help our clients, um, our patients to um, think about the past, right? Process the past. Think about the past. It's all about the past. Move it. What is your next question? Okay. So what were we talking about? We were talking about the empathic side. So do you guys understand what a toxic empath looks like? Right? Do you understand why it's important to develop some healthy narcissistic traits for you? And do you understand if you have more narcissistic traits, what that looks like? It's not a bad thing. So where do you guys think you are on when it comes to forming those relationships? This is something that we're going to cover in the Amazing Magnitude class. So we're going to be covering this in amazing magnitude. So if you're not, if you're not in the masterclass, it is in my link above in unstoppable confidence. It's going to be next Saturday, July 7th.